Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at why Americans don't use B-Days. A mini shower for your nether region, B-Days are a popular way worldwide to keep said regions tidy, and there are plenty of extremely inexpensive options for easily outfitting any standard toilet with one. So why has this popular bathroom fixture not caught on in the United States? Well, old prejudices, surprisingly new habits, and comfort level. Believed to have originated in France, the first B-Days were simply a bowl of water over which, after relieving herself, a person would squat and then use a hand to splash and wipe away any messes that remained. Eventually, a short, narrow stool with a bowl inset was developed that could be sat astride for easier cleaning. As a person who is mounted on this contraption resembles one sitting on a small stout pony, a bidet in French, the name was soon adopted for the bathroom fixture. Christophe de Rosier is credited with inventing the bidet, although the first written record of one appears in a 1710 account of the Marquis de Argenson, who noted that he had an audience with one Mademoiselle de Prix as she sat astride her bidet. In 1750, an upward sprayer powered by a hand pump was added, and thus bidet sarong, bidet with syringe, was born. The modern bidet that resembles a toilet was developed in the 19th century, and the very popular bidet seat came about in the 1960s with one of the most popular invented by an American, Arnold Cohen. In the 1980s, the modern seat was improved with the creation of the washlet, using remote control rolled wands that spout water jets and finish with a warm air dryer, the washlet is hugely popular, particularly in Japan. So why don't Americans use them? After all, if fecal matter got on just about anywhere else on your body, you wouldn't just wipe it off with toilet paper and call it good. Why should your derriere be any different? Although there is no definitive answer in each and every case as to why Americans eschew a bidet, there are a few major contributing factors. To begin with, there is the historical disdain that 18th century Britons had for the French aristocracy and its decadent and hedonistic lifestyle. As the early American colonists were heavily influenced by their British heritage, it is thought that this sentiment came with them to America too. Another theory notes that during World War II, the first and often only experience many Americans had with a B-Day was when soldiers saw them in French brothels, which perpetuated the idea that B-Days were somehow associated with immorality. A third theory, perhaps most plausible, looks to the classical process of bidaying. Unlike the use of a paper shield between hand and butt, traditionally with the bidet, though not so much anymore, the bare hand was used to splash, wipe, and generally clean both the junk and the trunk. As Americans traditionally have been extremely conservative about such things, the first toilet flushing didn't even show up in cinema until 1960 in the film Psycho, partially because of this, it is thought this may have influenced the rejection of the bidet as indoor plumbing became more and more common. The continued rejection today is then perhaps more about habit and tradition rather than based on any rational idea, the classic that's how we've always done it line of thinking. Even for those that use them in America, the general notion of it being slightly uncouth to talk about one's bathroom hygienic practices also lends itself to not spreading the word about the drastically superior cleaning experience with bidets over toilet toilet paper alone. So even for those who aren't nearly so prudish today, they simply stick with what they know, namely toilet paper. Of course, today there are a lot of compelling arguments as to why the switch should be made. For starters, it's dirt cheap, starting at around $25 for a basic model and ridiculously easy to install toilet seat variety bidets, with the cost quickly being offset by the savings on toilet paper. You see, unsurprisingly, bidet use drastically reduces the need for toilet paper, of which in North America alone, over 36 billion rolls are used each year. In addition, bidets, particularly those with heated seats, offer comfort and greater hygiene as the jets ensure your tush is thoroughly cleaned, as opposed to the dingleberries and skid marks that can result from using only toilet paper. This added comfort factor is particularly beneficial to those suffering from a sensitive backside at a given time, such as via swollen hemorrhoids or a rash. Note, contrary to popular belief, as we've covered in a previous video, every Everyone has hemorrhoids all the time, yes, even you. 
Third, using too much paper, or even just the thicker, high-end kinds, can lead to clogged toilets and sometimes clogged septic systems or clogged public sewer systems that require a lot of money to be spent to fix them. This is particularly the case when people use so-called flushable wipes for cleaning, which help create something known in the sewage industry as fatbergs that clog the pipes. Since little to no paper is used when a bidet is employed, such blockages are much less common in bidet-loving countries. For reference, as to the expense, in San Francisco alone, the city spends about $4 million annually just cleaning out fatbergs, according to Tyrone Jew of the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. Fourth, older people, among others, often benefit from the bidet as the sprayer reduces or eliminates the need for hand wiping, something that can become difficult to do for those with arthritis or who just due to advanced age, disability, or injury are less mobile. Fifth, women who suffer from frequent urinary tract infections may benefit from washing with bidets as opposed to only cleaning the area during the once-a-day shower. By washing away the specific pesky microbes responsible, there is less chance that some will enter the urethra and cause problems. There are also significant cleaning benefits during menstruation via relatively inexpensive dual sprayer units that have a feminine hygiene setting. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have a question that you'd like us to answer, do use the comments section below. We read them all and reply when we can. And we'd love to make some videos based on the questions that you guys would like answered. So leave a comment below. Also, check out some of our other videos over there on the right. And thank you for watching.